something to read. Yeah. <laughs> introducing our speakers today and we will start today's ceremony with Councillor Gord Perks of Ward 14 Parkdale High Park. I invite all of our speakers to stand at the podium with Councillor Perks as he reads the proclamation and the rainbow flag is raised. Thank you very much Marla. Before, before the proclamation I just wanted to say a couple of things. It is, it is uniquely and centrally human to want to love and be loved, to be intimate, to be romantic. That's part of who we are. It's also human to want to seek compassion, to seek community, to be part of society. Unfortunately, some people want to deny that compassion. They want to deny that community whether it's through prudery or prurience or most likely just from fear, these feelings in our community lead to intolerance, lead to violence, lead to hurt. That's why it's always been such a delight for me to be able to come here and read the proclamation for our International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia. It's particularly been important for me to be able to do that here with parents and friends of lesbians and gays who show that community begins with family and friendship who show that our mission our mission our task isn't merely to accept or to tolerate but to welcome with love into community all members of society this year uh things are going to be a bit different than last year i'm not going to read the proclamation it's my distinct pleasure to invite Mayor Rob Ford up to read the proclamation against international... being here and taking part in this uh, absolutely fantastic day. I want to read out the proclamation. Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia in Toronto, May 17, 2012. Whereas the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedom recognizes that no discrimination shall be made on the bias, or I'm sorry, on the basis of a sexual orientation and gender identities. Toronto is a society open to everyone including the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transsexual, two-spirit, and transsexual LGBT community who are an important part of the city's diversity. Toronto is an active participant in the fight for elimination of all forms of discrimination and is committed to the equal treatment of all people and their right to live in conditions of dignity, respect, and peace. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Rob Ford, on behalf of Toronto City Council, to hereby claim May 17, 2012, as a day against homophobia and transphobia in Toronto, and encourage the people of Toronto to send a strong message to the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, two-spirited, and transsexual communities, like, like all the communities are welcome, safe, and valued in this great city we call Toronto. All the best, Mayor Rob Ford.
on my pleasure. I've been running around a little bit, but I'll be around for a couple of minutes. Wow, folks, how do you follow that? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. to the local school. In five countries around the world, LGBT people are punished, some of them by death. This is not okay. We're very lucky and very fortunate in Canada, but let's make no mistake, we still have a long way to go. We need protections, stronger protections for our youth in our schools. We need gay straight alliances in every single publicly funded school in this country. Canadian Human Rights Act and to the criminal code of this country. So on this day, I welcome everybody here. I encourage you to come out to the legislature this afternoon. Support the politicians who support us. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am very honored to, uh, to be invited to speak here again this year. I want to thank PFLAG for organizing this event and for your welcoming invitation to the mayor and councillors. In the past, I attended PFLAG and Pride events as a supporter, as a councillor, in solidarity with the movement. Last year, I attended this event as the mother of a gay child. This year, this year, I'm also attending as a PFLAG member. Last year was a kind of coming out for me. It was the first time that I told the world my son was gay. And it was transformational. It did change me. And I want to thank Kristen Wong Tam and Irene Miller for encouraging me to step up and speak out. Last year, my son was invited to speak at a public event to talk about what pride meant to him. He talked about his experience of coming out. It was one of the most moving experiences in my life. I had not really understood until he spoke how much my acceptance had meant to him. But his public statements made me confront the truth about myself. I was the one who was hesitant about revealing that he was gay not just because I worried about the stubborn and residual discrimination against the LGBT community, but because I worried about the political implications of being an accepting mom. Would my more conservative constituents judge me? Would I pay a political price with some voters or communities for loving my son for who he is, for being proud and not ashamed? Of my son. I realized that my concern for him going public was really a concern about me going public. It was the first time I felt the possibility of being treated differently. The first time I felt the chill of homophobia. I experienced ever so slightly the fear of discrimination that every lesbian, gay, bisexual, and trans person faces every day. And it was then I felt that I had a responsibility to do more than just show up. As a public figure, I must be more than a bystander. I need to use the voice and position I have to say that intolerance and hatred is not acceptable. So today, as a proud mother of a gay son, as an elected official, I'm here to help raise the flag and to say all our children, our sisters, our uncles, our neighbors should be loved and accepted at home, in the workplace, on the street, and in this city. We We must particularly those of us elected to represent 
all of our constituents be dedicated to eliminating homophobia and transphobia in this city. Thank you to PFLAG today, for today, and thank you for your efforts every day, because together we are working to make this vision real. Thank you. I'd like to first start off by, by thanking everyone who's been able to join us today. Uh, it's certainly a very different turnout than the one we had last year, and uh, I'm absolutely thrilled. I also would like to acknowledge some of my colleagues who are, are standing with, uh, with us and, P and PFLAG to commemorate this special day. I'd like to name them because I, I think it's very important that they be recognized. Councillor Vaughn, Councillor McConnell, Councillor Perks, Councillor Davis, Councillor Stintz, Councillor Cole, Councillor Mahavik, Councillor Layton, Councillor Matlow, Councillor McMahon, Councillor Milchin, Councillor Crawford, Councillor Palacio, Councillor Lindsay Luby, Councillor Fragidakis, Councillor Doucette, Councillor Paula Fletcher, who sends her regrets from the UK, and of course, a very big thank you to my mayor and your mayor, Mayor Rob Ford. I'm actually a little bit sick, everyone, so I, I, uh, I came out of uh, a sick bed and I'm covering the flu, but I didn't want to miss this event with you. So, Councillor Carroll is also in the house. <laughs> if you were lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, I want you to know that Toronto City, Call, Toronto City Council stands with you and your family. We do so in our un unwavering way to support LGBT communities as we fight and struggle for equality. In every part of the world, women and men are persecuted and attacked because of who they are and who they choose to love. Homophobia, transphobia, and the brutality associated with that are rooted in a lack of understanding of what it actually means to be lesbian and gay, bisexual or transgender. Idaho began in 2004. It is now observed in over 100 countries. Idaho has, has given official recognition by a number of city councils, parliaments, and governments. And it is also observed by numerous United Nations agencies. But despite all this hard work and some of the gains that we've made, there's still more to do to turn around the tide of inequality and discrimination against the LGBTQ community. And at the forefront of this movement for equality is the exceptional, unwavering, unconditional, powerful leadership of PFLAG. To the PFLAG, yes. <laughs> to the PFLAG moms and dads and everyone else who supports their work and you are in that category, you are our chosen and extended family. Thank you for standing up for LGBT children in parent-teacher meetings, in your workplace, at Christmas, Hanukkah dinners, wherever you, wherever you dine, in the courts, in the places of worship, in our systems and symbols of democracy, whether it be the House of Commons, the Ontario Legislative Assembly, or City Hall. We know that this takes courage and we know you are courageous. Thank you for standing and defending and celebrating us in the places that choose to remain hostile and that resist social change and equality. To the PFLAG members and all their supporters, you are a loving family member, you are our ally, and without you and your support, we do not have a complete movement for human rights and equality. Thank you for you, for being here, Today, tomorrow, the day after, we know we can count on you, and we love you. Thank you. Today, I see and I recognize uh, Toronto City Hall uh, councillors who are here today, including Mayor Rob Ford, uh, the community leaders and groups here, and I want to start by thanking you all for the work you do each and every day 
in confronting, challenging, and shipment, and demonstrate our commitment to overcoming our shared challenges. We celebrate human rights laws and policies that protect our communities from discrimination based on sexual orientation. And we demonstrate our determination under the leadership of our trans communities to the gender identity and gender expression enshrined as rights in law. We ask that our federal and provincial legislators immediately pass bills currently in front of them that amend Canada and Ontario's Human Rights Code to have gender identity and gender expression protected in law. and learn from each other, to share our stories and learn from their stories, and lead our annual Pride Parade. This year's International Grand Marshal, Goran Milicic, is from Belgrade, Serbia. Goran's presence in this year's Pride Toronto Festival exposes the alarming LGBTQQ2SA human rights violations and continuing struggles in the Balkan states and in Eastern European countries where Pride events are often banned or met with beatings, stoning, rioting, property damage with a lack of law enforcement or homophobia and transphobia is so important. It is a message that there is hope in community and that love and acceptance can overcome fear and bigotry, that Pride can overcome shame. The rainbow flag flying proudly over Toronto is a testimony testament to the work, hard work that has been done of the past and an inspiration to our communities today. It is a rallying point where we can come together to celebrate and to demonstrate who we are as individuals, as a community, together, always together. So today we find strength in each other, we reaffirm our goal of eliminating homophobia and transphobia and in replacing them with love, acceptance and celebration. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. And before I leave, I want to take an opportunity to welcome you all and invite you all to join us for this year's Pride Toronto Festival. And I look forward to seeing you there. Happy day and a happy Pride in advance. Joining us, Toronto Police Service, to participate in the special flag raising ceremony recognizing the International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia. I'm grateful to have this opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Danielle Botnow. I'm a constable with the Toronto Police Service, and I recently accepted a position with the Divisional Policing Support Unit as a services liaison officer serving the LGBT community. This is a great honor and responsibility as Toronto's home to the third largest LGBT community in North America. I'm very excited about my new role and eager to continue the great work that has already been undertaken between the service and LGBT community partners. I look forward to building more bridges with the LGBT community a community to which I belong. Although we have made considerable strides over the years, we cannot rest on our successes. To this end, the service is committed to working with our many community partners to create awareness of gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender issues, and to educate others about the challenges that remain within our society Never 